Hi everybody, Steve from Steve's Makerspace. Today we're in P5.js and I'm gonna be showing you how to make flow fields, a static flow field like this, rather than an animated flow field. Here's another example, another one. I'm also gonna be adding some textures to create something like this and even this. This flow field stuff is the basis for how I created InFlow the uh, project I released on FX hash recently. I'm also going to be releasing this one, which is Espresso Dreams uh, on FX hash. And it's basically the same code, but with some different uh, parameters. I've got another one I'm planning to release called Undercurrents, which is also based on these flow fields. And I'm also working on this one. This is also flow fields, mostly the same code. Uh, just with different parameters, and this is sort of a Van Gogh look to it. I say that this is a static flow field because it's different from this, which is an animated flow field. Uh, this is created by Dan Schiffman of the D Coding Train. Uh, if you're interested in learning how to do an animated flow field, I'm going to recommend you watch his video, and I'll give you a link to his video. The animated flow field uses uh, particles in an object-oriented programming, and so it's more complicated. Uh, with the static flow fields, it's a lot less complicated. So we'll start this from scratch. I'm just going to get rid of the draw section. Let's find out the canvas size. Uh, that's going to be the minimum of the window width or the window height. Then we'll create our canvas based on the minimum of those. So canvas size, kind of my canvas size. And that should give us a canvas size that fits our window. Let's start with a background that is black. And we're going to have, um, I'm going to want to be in color mode HSB. And we'll do 360, 120, 100, 255 for that. So for the flow field, we're going to be using Perlin noise. Uh, and so we're going to need a resolution for that Perlin noise. Uh, 0.003 is a good place to start. And let's say that is noise for the angle, because there's going to be noise for color also. Uh, let's go ahead and do that one as well. So resolution 2, 0.002. And we'll do that one for the color. We're going to create a grid for our width and our height uh, using nested for loop. Let's do I. Now, instead of I++, plus plus, we're going to have a certain gap size. So let's say plus equals gap. And then up here, we can say that the gap is equal to 4. So we open up this and we do another loop. So what are we going to put in here? First, we're going to calculate our noise. So let's say that's noise one, and that's going to be based on the angle. So noise one is noise of I times res one, comma, J times res one. And then our angle is going to be N1, that noise, which is between 0 and 1, times 360 degrees. And 360 degrees is pi times 2. Now we're going to be creating a line. And that line is going to go from, let's say, we'll just start it as going from I comma J, and it's going to go to something. What is it going to go to? Well, we need to figure that out using sine and cosine. So for now, we'll say the new i is going to be the sine of the angle uh, times, and here we need a radius. So uh, the radius is going to be the length of our line. Uh, so let's actually call that len for length, and we'll say it's length of 5. Now, I could also call it rad for radius, but I'll call it length. And then we're going to have a new j, and that could be cosine of angle times length. So the new i and the new j, 
And let's see what that does. Nothing. Ah, because I have a black background and I've got black lines. Let's make our background uh, 200. Interesting. What did I do wrong? Uh, let's, let me try reversing these. Maybe this one has to be cosine and this one has to be sine. No, that pretty much gives me the same results. Oh, I know what I've done wrong. Uh, I need to add the I to this. So add I, add J, and there we go. Now we've got some little lines, so you can see this better. Let me um, make that a larger stroke weight. Uh, we'll make a larger gap, and we'll make the length longer. Yeah, so I think you can see this a little bit better. So now we have one little line for each spot in the grid, but we want longer lines uh, coming from each spot on that grid. So we're going to need another for loop. So we'll stick that here, and we'll say for k equals 0, k less than, let's say, 10, and k plus plus. Let's put the end of that bracket down here. This is going to be making uh, several line segments. So before we do this, uh, let's substitute x for i and y for j. And now we're going to say this is x, uh, this is y, And we got to do one more thing. After we draw the line, x is now equal to new x, and y is now equal to new y. That way, when the second line segment is going to be drawn, it's starting that line segment from the end of the first line segment. And let's tidy the code, and I'll hit a save, and let's see what that does. There we go. Now let's do a little bit more of a gap. Uh, so now you can see, whoops, what's going on? There we go. So now you can see that we've got ourselves a flow field. Excellent. We're making good progress. So let's say we want to make this a little more interesting and we'll add some color to this. So I've got my resolution uh, 2 for the color of the noise. Now with my art projects that I'm doing on FX Hash, I have a color table with a bunch of color palettes, and I use Perlin Noise to pull colors from that color palette based on the noise field. Uh, in this case, just to simplify things, I'm just going to use the Perlin Noise to pull color from the 360 degree color wheel. And the color I'm going to use, instead of doing the color in here, I want each line to be the same color. So if it starts off red, it's going to finish off red. So let's put here, uh, noise 2 is going to be noise i times res 2 comma j times res 2. And then let's just say it's the hue that we want to change. So the hue is going to be N2, which is a number between 0 and 1. And we multiply that by 360, because there's 360 hues in the color wheel. Then we're going to make that our stroke. Stroke is going to be H. And for now, let's just say um, 90 and 90 for the saturation and the brightness. And also, let's give it some alpha. Uh, instead of 255, let's make it 150. So let's try that. Now we get something like this. So it's getting a little bit more colorful. And now that we've got this, we can actually change this background back to black. There we go. So what now? I think it would be more interesting if we got the colors down to five colors instead of having all 360 colors in the hue color wheel. So for that, instead of saying N2 times 360, 
I believe 360 divided by 5 is 72. Right. Let's do N2 times 5 because we want 5 colors. And we're going to floor that. So if we get a number between 0 and 1 for the noise, multiply it by 5. We're going to get a number between 1 and 5. We floor it so we get an integer between 1 and 5. Then we multiply that times 72, which is going to give us a number that is either 0 or 72 or 140 or 144, etc. So let's see what that looks like. There we go. Now I happen to know that noise, uh, unfortunately Perlin noise produces a number instead of between 0 and 1, it mostly produces numbers between 0 0.2 and 0 0.8, which is kind of annoying uh, because then you lose the top and the bottom uh, possibilities. So in order to get a larger range of color and also a larger range of angles for this, I'm going to subtract 0 0.2 and then I'm going to multiply by 1.7. And doing that, subtracting by 0 0.2 and multiplying by 1.7 is going to give me something that is a little bit wider uh, going from 0 to 1 instead of 0.2 to 0.8. So let's do this again. And now we've got more color showing up. Let's we do the same thing for the noise down here. So let's see, I got to put that in parentheses. There we go. We should get more angles showing up. So it's looking better already. Awesome. Now let's just play with this a little bit. If we decrease the resolution for the angles, you'll see something like this. Isn't that nice? Or we can increase the uh, angles and you get more flow happening. I just tried uh, de reducing my gap uh, to four and it gave me an error. It's uh, afraid that I'm getting into an infinite loop, which I'm not actually, but it's just taking longer than it expects. So let's do um, no protect. And that will keep it from stopping me uh, from an infinite loop. And I'll just hit a save to make sure. There we go. Now it still doesn't look great. Uh, let's try reducing our color resolution and we should see a lot more color. Let's, um, let's try 0 0.005. That's a little bit better. Let's put our angle back to this. So one thing we could do to improve this, instead of being completely on a grid system, uh, let's vary the starting position of each of these lines and that'll give it a little bit more organic look to it. So instead of X starting at I, we'll say X is going to start at I plus random. Let's make this a variable. We'll say it's called start vary, comma start vary. Uh, and we'll make start vary up here equal to say five and then we can add that to the j as well so there we go that looks nice much better see how that improved now one thing we could do with the start vary if we increase the start vary a lot let's increase it to 50. now it is mixing the colors more so that there's less definition between where, say, this blue is and this green is. Let's do something in between, maybe 25, see what that looks like. Yeah, that looks really nice. So you can see we're already getting somewhere, and we only have 32 lines of code right now. So one of the nice things is uh, to see the flow field, you need gaps in between these. Otherwise, if you don't have any gaps, it's hard to see the flow fields. Let's put the gap to uh, three, maybe. It's also gonna take longer. It's drawing more lines when it does this, 
but you can see it doesn't look quite as good. It really requires you to have some gaps so that you can see those lines. So one of the nice things though about having gaps is you can put something behind this and it shows through. So instead of having a background of zero, let's do a background that is blue. We'll do 220, uh, 80, 80. That should give us a blue background. There we go. Let's, let's darken that background a little bit. We'll go to 50 for the, uh, go to 50 for the brightness. That's better. Uh, let's do try a red background. That, that would be zero. Very nice. I think a yellow background would be maybe 40. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Now we're, we're getting the same five colors of the color wheel every time. Let's try to vary that some. Let's make a start color is going to be random 360. And then for the hue, we're going to say add start call. But that might put us past 360 degrees. So let's say if H is greater than 360, then we're going to say H minus equals 360. So if you go say 10 past 360, and then you subtract 360, that'll put you back to 10. So now if we hit start, we still get five colors from the color wheel, but now those five colors are varying. Another thing we could do is we could vary uh, the saturation and the brightness. Let's start with 80 and then we'll add a random, uh, say negative 15 comma 15. And we'll start this one at 80 as well and add a random uh, negative 15 comma 15. And then also for the hue, let's do the same with the hue. We'll uh, add random, uh, let's say, 10 and 10. So we're changing a little bit the hue, the saturation, and the brightness for these lines. There we go. That looks really nice. See that? Maybe 10 was too much. Let's try 8. All right. It's good. Beautiful. Love it. Okay. Uh, the other thing, let's add a circle in the background. So a circle, and we'll say, put it at the thirds point. So width divided by three, height divided by three. We'll make it the size of width times 0.6. Try that. And let's make that circle uh, red, say, and that's going to be at 80 and 80. So a, fill it with a red circle. Uh, let's do, should I do no stroke on that? Let's do no stroke on the circle. I think let's do a blue background to show off the red circle a little bit better. There we go. That looks nice. Uh, so, you know, this is just an example, something you could put in the background. Um, one thing that I'm doing with one of my projects is I'm doing a whole nother Pearl and Noise color field behind this flow field. So that's giving me something that looks like this, which is pretty cool. Uh, there's some other stuff going on here, of course. But this reminds me that uh, you can vary the stroke weight. So let's go in here. Right now we've got the same stroke weight for all of these lines. Yeah, in here, uh, within the line itself, let's change the stroke weight. One way we could change this is we could make K, the number of line segments we've made, uh, part of the stroke weight. So if we say K, um, just right there. Let's see what happens. All right, we've got some really thick lines because uh, we get a stroke rate of 10 at the end. Let's multiply this times 0 0.5 maybe. That's a little bit better. Uh, now, this has a round cap on it. Let's do a square cap. Yeah, we do stroke cap uh, square instead of round, which is round is the default. Flow lines, I think, look better 
with a square cap instead of a round cap. Let's do times 0.3, see if that looks any better. There we go. And actually, what I think will look better, we're counting upwards, and so the line is going from thin to thick. If we reverse this, I think it'll be better. So we'll do 10 to start with, go to zero. We need to make sure that we change this sign from less than to greater than, other, and this to minus minus. Otherwise, if we forget to do that, we're gonna get into an infinite loop. Um, I'll hit save just to make sure I didn't mess anything up and lose my code. Uh, so now it'll go from thick to thin. There we go. Uh, let's do a little bit more gap. So let's do uh, 10, looking good. Now one thing I notice is we the lines are kind of stopping along the edges uh, over here on the right and up here at the top, um, also down here. So one thing we could do to fix that is to adjust the start and the stop of these. So let's do minus 20, minus 20, and we'll go to with plus 20, plus 20. Let's see if that's enough. There we go. Now it's going off the ends, and we don't notice those start and stop of the line so much. Now one thing I want to point out here, I'm using a lot of hard keyed numbers, uh, so with plus 20. If I wanted to make this nicely reproducible at different sizes for FX hash, for instance, I would want to be doing with times uh, 1.1 or something like that instead of doing with plus 20. But for simplicity's sake, for this video, I'm just using some hard numbers. Okay, another thing I could do uh, with the stroke weight, instead of making the stroke weight go from a thick line to a thin line, let's do a random size stroke weight. So stroke weight, random, let's say random six, and we can get rid of that one. And let me maybe give it some more gap there we go. So that's kind of interesting. Now, just to make this a little more interesting, let's give this some texture. Now, I'm not going to go over all of the code for the texture part. I'm going to copy that part. So I'm going to go over to some other code that I already have. Um, we'll copy this function paper texture. And I'll also copy this little thing at the bottom that allows you to save a JPEG. And I'll paste that at the bottom here. I have talked about a paper texture in another video. Um, I will link to that in the video description. But basically what the paper texture is doing is drawing a curve. Uh, it's a random curve somewhere on the screen at a random angle. And for the paper texture, you could just do a random color for that line. But in this case, I want to grab a color uh, from a pixel off of the canvas, and then that's going to be the line's color. And I've also got two different paper texture types in here. One of these types does a blurring effect, and the other type is the regular paper texture that I've shown you uh, before. So let me just demonstrate the regular paper texture first. So that's going to be after I do everything, we're going to call paper texture and we're going to say that we want type one paper texture, which is going to do this one right here. So if we just hit start, let's see what that looks like. There we go. Doesn't that look nice already? So we've added this paper texture. It's a really strong paper texture. Uh, it's got alpha 210. Um, if we said alpha 100, it would be a more subtle paper texture. Let's put that back to 210, I like that. Uh, and then the other paper texture is a more blurring. And the way that we get that is that we make the width size, the stroke weight of the line larger, and then we make the alpha of that line smaller. 
so we get a thick curve that is more transparent. So if we call paper texture zero, you'll see we get this blurring effect. Now that is different than the blur, if I said filter uh, blur, and we said two, let's do call that, in, let's call that instead, we get this, which is very blurry. Um, let's try filter blur one or 1 1.5. It's hard to describe except to say that it's, it's really blurry. If I do this paper texture instead, it's blurring, but it's blurring in a nicer way, I guess. Let's put the alpha down on that to 10 maybe. And so it's just blurring a little bit now. Uh, let's may maybe do 15. Okay, there we go. And let's do, uh, we'll call the blurring and we'll call the paper texture, um, the regular paper texture. So we'll just copy this and we'll call the blurring first and then the regular paper texture. Look at that. Isn't that nice? Oh my goodness. Can you believe that? Uh, let's try calling the paper texture first and the blurring second. There we go. That I think that looks even better. Look at that. Can you believe it? You probably didn't believe it at the beginning of this video uh, when I was halfway through that you were going to get something like this. I mean, this is almost mintable. I think it maybe it is mintable. Let's try it with just the regular stroke weight one lines. We'll take out the random stroke weight size. There we go. That looks really cool. Let's do the stroke lines that are decreasing in size. Uh-huh, that looks good. And let's change the resolution for the angle to 0.03. Oh, very interesting. Look at that. Let's mix the color up a little bit. Maybe go up to 0 0.01. All right. Very good. All right. I think we're done. I'm going to hit a save on this. This code will be available in the video description. I hope this has been helpful. If you've liked this video, please give it a like. Consider subscribing to the channel. Ring the bell for notifications comments. I love to read your comments. Uh, they're always welcome. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye now. Steve's Makerspace.